Hello everyone and welcome back to Learning with Jelly. I'm so excited to launch the first lesson of our Python for Beginner series that we're gonna have on the channel. So today we're going to start off with Python data types and we're gonna go over two types in this lesson and then we're gonna keep going through the other types in future lessons. So we're gonna go over some numbers and some strings, okay? And the things that you can do with numbers in Python and things that you can do with text characters. So please like, comment, and subscribe. Comment if you have any questions that you may have. I'm actually going to utilize Anaconda um, in the Jupyter Notebook through Anaconda to demonstrate Python. If you do not have Anaconda or Jupyter Notebook installed on your computer, I'll have a link in the description so that you can install that. I'll also put out a future tutorial video on how to install that software, but it's pretty straightforward and it is free. So you could get going with that. So let's start with the variable types that exist in Python. We have numbers, strings, and we have list tuples and dictionaries. Our list tuples and dictionaries are gonna be our collection of items that we're gonna have a whole separate lesson on. We have Booleans, which is true and false. And we also have some print formatting. And we're actually gonna look at a formatted string literal in today's example. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is the numbers in the the numbers, which includes integers and floats in Python. And for some of you, you may be asking, what exactly is a float? What is an integer? So the numbers that Python recognizes are integers, which are my whole numbers. They can be negative or positive. My floats, which has decimals, they can have as many decimal places as you would like. So in this example, negative 5.5, 10.8, 120.22222. All of those are examples of floats. And they're also complex numbers, which are imaginary numbers, okay? In my world of data sciences, I don't necessarily use, utilize complex imaginary numbers often, but if you do have to use complex numbers and whatever you decide to do, Python can handle that as well. So the order of operations for numbers, so it's the PEMDAS. So same thing from high school or whenever you learn the order of op operations for math. Python recognizes the parentheses, then exponents, multiplication, division, then addition and subtraction. So in this example that I have on the right, we see that I've assigned X to be three, Y to be two, Z to be seven. So X plus two is 10. And if we exponentiate that to the square, to square, we get 100, okay? I can also type the numbers directly into the SAS interface. So if you want to do multiple math um, uh, operations and you want to use the same variables and don't have to keep retyping, this is a good way to assign variables to a specific number. That way you can just go and change the number. You don't have to change the formula every time or you can just write in the numbers directly, okay? And we're gonna go over variable assignment in a later lesson, but you're introduced to it here. All right, so some math operations that is kind of funky in Python, um, modulus, AKA the remainder, when you divide a number, that's denoted by the percent sign and floor division, which means rounding it down, is denoted by the double backslashes, okay? Um, so, or forward slashes, better yet. So in this example, if X, oh, looks like I had a connection thing going on there. If X is equal to 10 and Z is equal to three, 10 divided by three, right? It's gonna be a little bit, the remainder is gonna be one, right? because 10 divided by three, three can only go into 10 three times, which is nine. And then it has a remainder of one and one exponentiated to the first power is one, okay? And floor division, 10 divided by three, it is 3.1 something, but it's going to round down. So you're not gonna get a decimal output in floor division, you're going to get a whole number. It's either gonna round down or it's going to round up. So these are some operators that aren't as um, intuitive 
Notice that the exponentiating sign, if you want an exponent, is a double asterisk. So if you want to exponentiate anything, and this is going to be beneficial for when we go over some statistics formulas um, that are common for data scientists, but that is denoted by the double asterisk. All right, so jumping from numbers, we're now going to get into strings. A very popular string that you always see is this hello world, okay? Don't worry, I'm not gonna make you type out hello world in your Jupyter notebook. Instead, we're gonna go through some different methods. So strings is a way to represent text characters. Keep in mind that strings are arrays, and we're gonna talk about arrays later, but because they are arrays, you can index strings. That means you can pull out pieces of the string and you can also loop through them. And we're going to go through loops in the future lessons as well. And they're usually surrounded by single or double quotes. So in this example, I have X equal to a single quote string, which is Python for beginners. And then I print out X. Okay. So the beauty of double quotes, okay? If you are trying to type text that has built-in apostrophes, like I will, you are, whatever the case may be, single quotes will give it a syntax error, okay? It's not going to recognize the RE and the ready part because you close the string, okay? So to avoid this and so that you're able to use apostrophes, you wanna use those double quotes, okay? So you can see once I put it in double quotes versus single quotes, I'm allowed to use that apostrophe or I can escape that apostrophe. So lesson here is try to utilize double quotes. Um, don't go back and forth between the two. Just have your text surrounded with double quotes, okay? All right, concatenation. So concatenation is just a fancy term of placing your string side by side. You, can, can, you cannot concatenate numbers and strings together. That is not possible. In order to do concatenation, both of you or all of your variables need to be of type string. Okay, so in this example over here, and I'm just going to make this slightly bigger for right now, I see that I have my name equal to James, I have a department number equal to 100, and I have a department name equal to finance. So then I try to concatenate all of these strings, aka putting them side by side. So I do name, and the concatenation symbol is plus, just like it's addition for integers department number plus department name. And then I see this error, can only concatenate strings, not ints, okay? So that means that my department number is, a, is an integer. So I need to change that to a string. How do I go about doing that? Is that I can put the single quotes around it. So now it's red and that red is denoted by string. And now I can say name plus department number plus department name, and it prints out James 100 Finance. Notice that it's no spaces in the printout, okay? Because I didn't add any spaces into my strings themselves or I didn't add it when I added all of the variables together, okay? So for concatenation, you can only concatenate strings and that means putting different words or different strings side by side, okay? So how will we actually add in those blanks if we wanted to add in blanks, okay? So adding in blanks, we can do an empty string, okay? So in the same example from the previous slide, now I have name plus a double quote with nothing in it, it's just a space, plus department number, plus another space, plus department name. And when I do that, I get James 100 Finance, a little bit easier to read. So you can add empty strings or spaces into your output in Python as well. The biggest thing to remember with concatenation is that you have to have variable types of string. All right, so as I mentioned, and we're gonna go over this a little more in the future as well, you can index strings because they're considered arrays. So the first character in your string is gonna be position zero. So Python always starts counting from zero. And that takes a little bit of getting used to for those who are used to counting at one. But for Python, you're able to start counting at zero. You can get how long the string is 
by doing the length function. And if you add a colon at the end of your index, it goes completely to the end of the string. You can also add a colon in the beginning of your index, and that's going to start completely at the beginning, okay? So I have three examples here. I'm given an email, and the S is going to be zero, the A is going to be one, the M is going to be two, the P is going to be three, and so forth. And then now I'm indexing. So this indexing is going to call the variable and it's going to be in these brackets, okay? So that is the syntax for, for indexing. And I'm going to put 11 in this bracket and it's going to return to me the 11th letter, which is G. And I can count 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In fact, it is G. Or I can say, hey, return to me the 11th letter all the way to the end of the string. So that would just be, once again, in brackets, brackets, 11 colon. And I can also figure out what the length of the string is. And in this case, the length of the string is 20, okay? So that's a little introduction of indexing strings. Sometimes this is beneficial if you know that a certain piece of information is going to start at a different number and you want to grab that piece of information or you want to chop off, say, for instance, I only want what's in front of the at symbol. I can kind of like find where the at symbol is located in a string and only take the, the beginning part because I don't care about the gmail.com yahoo.com, et cetera. Okay, so there's common string methods. There's a ton, ton, ton of string methods. And when we switch over to Jupyter Notebook, I'm going to show you how to actually see all those methods, okay? But some common ones is you can change all your text to uppercase, you can change it to lowercase, you can replace letters and words, you can split the string into multiple strings, et cetera. So the example that we have here is using all of those. So in this block of code, my first name is James, my last name is Bond, and my full name is James Bond. So I see that I can do this dot upper and it has its parentheses, right? So these methods are followed by parentheses. It's going to change James to all uppercase. I use the dot lower and it will change Bond to all lowercase. And I use the dot split and inside the parentheses, I have to tell it what to split on. And in this case, it's splitting on a space because a space separates the first and last name. This could be a comma, it could be a colon, whatever the case may be. So you can split a string that has time in it if you only want the hours and minutes and you don't want the seconds, et cetera. And then that prints out one string of James and another string of Bond. So that is some example of methods. Like I said, I'm gonna have a link in the description of tons of other Python methods you can play around with as well. So formatted string literals, okay? So if you want to add a variable assignment to your printed text output, you can use what we call a formatted string literal. And all that that is, is basically taking whatever is stored in a variable, in this case, name, and it's updating what's going to be printed out based off of what's stored in that variable. And this is um, useful that if you wanted to make like a welcome email, for instance, and you wanna say, good morning, but you wanna change the name to whatever name the user types in or whatever name that you have stored in your database, you can just loop through all of those names and just print out all of those different names. So it'll say, welcome Sue Roberts, welcome James Bond, et cetera. So in order to do this, we still do that print with the parentheses and we have an F for a formatted literal. And then whatever variable we wanna put in this case is name, we enclose that in curly braces. So the output in this case will be, welcome Sue Roberts, glad to have you. So that way I don't have to change my print statement every time the name changes. So if I put James Bond here, it will be welcome James Bond, glad to have you. So that's an introduction to formatted string literals. 
We also can have you do a user input function, okay? So it's going to be input for Python 3.6 or 3.2 and higher, and it's gonna be raw underscore input if you're still messing around with Python 2, okay? But pretty much I'm setting the username equal to input. What is your username? And then it's gonna ask the user who wants the code to type in their name. In this case, I typed in Jelly. And then it's gonna return this formatted string literal that says, welcome Jelly, thanks for visiting our site, okay? So that is an introduction, very brief introduction to the input function and the two main variable types of numbers and strings. So now we can hop over to the Jupyter Notebook really, really quickly. And let me zoom in on this Jupyter Notebook. Like I said, I, there is a link in the description for you to download Anaconda so you can have access to Jupyter Notebook. But these are the first two examples that we went over. So if I were to change my Z to four, it's going to be 10 divided by four, which is floor division, right? And that's going to be two with a remainder of two, but it's going to go ahead and round that down to two since the exponent is one. Okay, this is an example of why double quotes are so important. So you, in single quotes, I get this error because we can tell that it turned black too. So that means that that's not part of the string because it turned black because red is the default for strings. But if I surrounded it, surround it with these two double quotes, it's gonna print off exactly how I want. Okay, this is our example of concatenation. So we're trying to put the name, department number, and department name side by side, but I can't do that because when I run this, it says I can only concatenate strings, okay? So that me, that's Python telling me that department number is not a string. So I can surround it by um, single quotes or double quotes to turn it into a string. I also can do this stir function. So this stir is the string function and I can put uh, 100, okay? And then it's still gonna give me the same output. So this is what we consider typecasting, okay? Where I can put stir, if I wanted to change this into an integer, since it already is an integer, I can do int, a next one is float. So all of that is what we call typecasting. You can change the type of your variable just by these um, letters. It's a built-in Python function. This is the length function for us to tell us the length of that string. If I wanted to figure out other methods I can, of strings, I can do help in the str. And it says lower, you can strip off white space, you can replace things, you can partition it, et cetera, et cetera. So there's a lot of different methods that it tells you what it will return and how to use it if you just call help. And then down here, this is our input function that I wanna show you briefly. So see how it says, what is your username? The user types in Jelly. And then it says, welcome Jelly, thanks for visiting our site, okay? So I highly recommend that you play around typing some string examples and some numeric examples in your own Jupyter Notebook just to get used to Python syntax, variable assignments, the double quotes, things of that nature, how to look up help documentation, because that will be very, very beneficial in the next lesson. So as I mentioned, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm so happy to start this Python for Beginners series that have been asked of me. So please leave me any comments below if, you need if you're having trouble or if you need help. And thank you for tuning in with Learning with Jelly. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.